Hi, it's Chris, and in this video we're going to show you how to remove and install the mica heater in a GE dryer. So changing the mica heater or element in your GE dryer is not a huge job. It's just a matter of taking a few pieces out of the way first, removing the drum, and accessing the heater. Keep in mind if your machine needs to be repaired, it's usually simple enough to do it yourself. Visit PartSelect.com, enter your model number, and quickly find and order the part you need. The most common reason to replace your heating element is a no heat condition. Your dryer is running and your fuses and your circuit breakers are good, but there's no heat. Most likely it's your element. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, of course, think about some safety. So we're going to want to disconnect our power for sure. So you can either unplug the cord to your dryer, or if you don't have a cord, if it's hardwired in, you're going to want to go to your fuse panel, turn off your circuit breakers, or if you have fuses, remove your fuses. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to remove the top on this dryer and that gives us the ability to access some screws so that we can remove the front so we can get at the internals. We're just going to open the door and remove the screws that hold the top in place. Now that the screws are removed, we're able to lift the top off. set that to one side. So the next thing we need to do is to remove the two screws in the top front corners that releases the front from the rest of the cabinet. So there, now we have one screw out, we'll take the one out in the other corner. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure on the front, uh, pushing it towards the cabinet, because once the screw comes out, this whole front piece is going to want to come forward. And if you're not aware that's what's about to happen, then the whole front could basically just fall right off onto the floor. So now I'm just going to pull the front out from away from the cabinet. And when I do that, I'm going to be removing the, uh, the front bearing mount that supports the drum. So the drum is going to want to drop a little bit, and that's okay. It can't go far, but it just drops that little tiny bit and pull the front forward. Now that the front is released, we can see that there's a couple of wires that... And we're going to want to remove those. With the wires disconnected, we can now lift the front right off the dryer. And we'll set that over here. So our next step is going to be to remove the drum itself. And to do that, we have to release the tension that's on the belt. So to do that, we're just going to reach in from underneath the dryer drum on both sides and I'm just going to take hold of the idler pulley, release the tension by pulling it over off the belt, slipping the belt off the motor pulley and then I'll be able to take the drum out. So now that I've released the tension on the belt so it's no longer around the motor or idler pulley, I'm able to use that belt as a little bit of a, a handle and allows me to just take control of the dryer drum and pull that drum right out of the dryer itself. So the easiest way to change this heater is actually to remove the housing right out of the dryer itself. So I'm just going to disconnect the wires. So we'll want to remove the wiring from the heater itself. We'll just take our pliers and grab the terminal and wiggle it off. And on the other side there'll be two more wires. So now it's just a matter of taking the four mounting screws out. Now we can take our heater assembly right out and put it on the bench. So now that we have the heater housing out of the dryer itself and on the bench, it's really easy now to be able to see just exactly how this mica heater is set into place. It's really pretty clever. You'll notice that on the mica heater, on the outer perimeter, there's all these indentations. These indentations are exactly set into place that will align up with these metal tabs coming out of the heater housing that secure it in place. So what we'll be doing is actually rotating this heater 
very slightly in the housing so that they line up with these tabs and we can lift it right out. So in order to rotate our heater, there's one piece of metal or one tab that's actually stopping it from rotating and it's this little tab right here. So we're just going to take our pliers and bend that tab down out of the way. And that will allow us to rotate this heater. So now you see that the tabs and the notches line up that allow us to lift the heater right out of place. Now you might have to wiggle and jiggle it a little bit just to clear, but then it'll all lift out in one piece. So now to install our heater, it's really very easy. We're just going to set it into place. We'll put our connectors for our wiring into the slots first, and then just lower it into place. So once we have the heater laying in place, we want to look to make sure that we have our tabs from the metal housing are lined up with where the notches are in the heater. And once it's settled into place, and you'll see it's nice and free, now we just simply want to rotate the heater. And there, once you have it rotated, and you can see it's being held now by every tab, the last thing we need to do is just to pull up this metal finger so that this tab will actually prevent the heater from being able to move out of position. Just like that. So now that we have the heater mounted back into the housing, we're simply going to reattach the housing to the dryer and then we'll connect our wires. And don't tighten them all up until you have all four in, because you may need to wiggle that heater a little bit in order to line everything up. Once you're putting the fourth screw in, you can secure that so it's nice and tight, and then go back and snug up all the others. So there now, our heater housing is mounted. It's just a matter of attaching our wires. So we'll start with this thermostat. Putting the wires on are very easy. They're both the same size terminal and it's basically an in and out circuit so you don't have to worry about which one goes where. Move on to the other thermostat. And again, this thermostat is an in and out circuit. The, the heater uh, terminals are the same size so they just push straight on. You don't have to worry about mix matching. Now in this thermostat, you'll notice that there's smaller terminal and larger terminal, which makes it really easy to connect. So we'll start with our larger terminal ones first. And you want to make sure when you push them on that they go on nice and snug. If they feel loose, then just give uh, the terminal a little crimp with your pliers and so it's a little bit tighter connection. So now we're going to our smaller terminals. And again, just slide those on and make sure they're a good firm connection. There, so our thermostats are wired. It's just now a matter of connecting our heater wires. And we move over to the other side. And there, our wiring's all connected. So now we can look at uh, putting our drum back into place. So to install the drum, the first thing I typically do is I'll put the belt around the drum. And the belt has two sides, a smooth side and a rib side. You'll always want to make sure that the rib side is down touching the drum itself. So you'll notice on your drum, there's typically a mark where the belt normally rides. So that's your guide when you go to put your belt on your drum as to where you want to start it. So now again, using my belt as a handle, I'm going to use it to help me assist in putting the drum in. So what we'll be looking to do when we set the drum in is to line up that bearing so that it goes into the center of that heater housing. Now again, using the belt as a handle, I'm just going to raise the tub. I'm just going to let it 
push its way down in between the sides of the cabinet. And now I'm just going to bring that drum in as level as I can. So we just support the drum so that that center bearing is pretty much level and you'll feel it drop right into place. Now that it has, we just again line up our belt onto the marks on the drum where it used to live. Now that we're all set, what we're going to look to do is take the belt, put it around the motor pulley, slip it underneath the idler, and then lift that idler bracket off of that motor mount and the pulley will then come in and tighten that belt. There, our belt is on, and things turn, so that's good. I'm just going to take the front and there's little pins down in either corner that go into the slots. So now we'll just bring our wires up, put them on the appropriate terminal. And they should go on nice and snugly. If they don't, you're just going to want to take a little pair of your needle nose pliers and just squeeze the terminal a little bit so that when it goes on, it's nice and snug. There we go. Now just slip the cover back over to protect the wires. So we're just going to bring that up in place. We'll lift our drum a little bit to ease the lip of the drum over the bearings. And then I just need to put my two screws in. And now it's just a matter of putting the top back on. Now with the top on, we just put our two screws in, one up in this right hand corner. Just give the drum a little turn. So it's just that easy to replace the mica heater in your GE dryer.